My name is Tina Funder and I'm the founder of Alt Leather and we make leather out of plants. About five years ago, I started a handbag label using plant-based leather alternatives because I'd heard about a material that was being developed out of Mexico called cactus leather. And it led me down a bit of a rabbit hole of researching the leather industry. And I had no idea that leather was a destructive material. We all love leather. It's ubiquitous. We wear it every day and I'm a bit of an environmentalist and so I launched this handbag label using cactus and apple leathers only to find just after launching that really they were just plastic with a bit of apple and cactus thrown in the mix and so I started researching whether it would be possible to develop a 100% bio-based version and that's what led me to Alt Leather. So we've developed a biomaterials platform and our first product is a 100% bio-based leather alternative. We make it using waste streams and regenerative plant-based ingredients and it's for application across everything from footwear and fashion all the way through to upholstery and automotive interiors. So the journey really began once we'd done a lot of research into the bio-based alternative space and realised that there probably was a path forward. I started calling lots of research institutes in Australia, so I called CSIRO just to see if I could find someone who was already working in the space and I, I didn't find anybody, which was I suppose a good thing and a bad thing because I would have loved the help at the time, but at the same time it did show that there was a gap in the market. And so I finally found a leather application specialist who was supplying traditional leather to premium automotive industry in Europe. So I started talking to him to understand a bit more about the automotive industry. Together we came up with a bit of a hypothesis about how we could approach the, the bio-based leather alternative. And what was great speaking to him was he confirmed the auto industry was actually looking in this space. They could see that there's a need for it. So that was a great market validation. The first samples weren't pretty, they looked a bit like scrambled eggs actually. I look back to those first samples and wonder how we actually thought that we could get to where we are now, uh, because really there was no signs that we were going to, but we both just believed in what we were doing. So. So over the last two and a half years we've invented a new material from scratch and that has been a huge undertaking in terms of the number of trials that we have to do. It's taken thousands and thousands of trials with thousands of different ingredients. So that's what the team sort of does on a day-to-day -day basis. We've got a, a formulation team who works on the chemical side, so sourcing those natural ingredients and then integrating them into our chemical formulation. And then we have an engineering and production team who take that material and figure out the best way to optimise our process and what that's going to look like at a larger scale. Another really exciting time was in July this year, we debuted our material at Paris Hot Couture Fashion Week with a Japanese designer called Yuma Nakazato and he was amazing to work with because he's used to working with new materials so he understood the parameters that a new material might not work exactly how you expect it to work and so he, we worked with him over the course of two months and then our material literally walked down the runway at Paris Fashion Week which was very exciting. Being an innovator in Australia means quality. Brands trust the quality that they're going to get out of Australia. The other advantage that we have is being really close to APAC. So we've been able to spend a lot of time in India and some of our chief scientists are from Vietnam and it just means that we're able to liaise quite easily with those Asian and Pacific countries. I don't think the leather industry will go away completely, we'll always have a need for traditional leather, but I do think uh, the fact that cattle grazing systems occupy 50% of the Earth's land surface area at the moment, there's not much more room to grow cattle and so we are going to at some stage need alternatives and that's where Alt fits in. So our key to success has been being one step ahead of where the technology is, so pushing it out to customers probably slightly before we're, we're ready. Being in that uncomfortable zone means that the momentum has been really fast. So if we think about that cliche, progress over perfection, I think that's something that we've done really well. We believe that the future of leather is regenerative, circular and 100% bio-based. And that's what we're doing at Alt Leather, so we're excited about the future.